Every time I want to try a new bread recipe that's baked in a pan, the first thing I would like to know is what pan size is this recipe intended for? Because if the ingredient amounts are for a pan larger or smaller than mine, then it will affect the shape of my bread, or in some cases, the crumb texture. Precision has an important role in successful bread making. So in this video, I'll share with you how to accurately scale any bread recipe to the size of your bread pan. Be sure to watch to the very end where I'll share with you a free tool I've created for you to easily scale any bread recipes. Come, follow me on my journey towards a happier, healthier, and freer life. Subscribe to be notified on upcoming videos. Some of you may know I launched a collection of cold weather scarves, especially designed to comfort those with sensitive skin. So if you find scarves scratchy, check out freeandcat.com. In the last video, I shared how I make shokuban, Japanese milk bread, in a 9x4x4 inch Pullman loaf pan. As an example, I'm going to take that recipe and show you how I scale it down to fit this mini lidless loaf pan. It's so easy that by the end of this video, you'll be able to use the same technique to accurately scale any bread recipe to your loaf pan. Step number one, calculate the baker's percentages. Let's look at this bread recipe. The percentages here are the baker's percentages. If the recipe you're following already provides the percentages, like this one, skip this step. But not all recipes provide the baker's percentages, so I'll show you how to calculate it. In order to do that, we have to first understand what baker's percentage is. Baker's percentage is a system used in baking to show bread recipes in a form of ratios expressed as percentages. The ratio is the weight of each ingredient to the total weight of flours. Why flours? Because it's the main component in most baked goods. So for example, looking at this recipe, the ratio of the weight of milk powder to the total weight of flours is 10 grams milk powder to 342 grams bread flour, which is the only type of flour in this case. To express this in percentage form, We'll take 10 grams divided by 342 grams times 100, which equals to 2.9%, and we'll round it up to 3%. Therefore, by looking at a baker's percentage of milk powder, we know that the weight of milk powder to be used will always be 3% the weight of the bread flour. One benefit of looking at bread recipes through the lens of baker's percentages is, when you get familiar with baking different types of bread, you can look at the baker's percentages of a recipe and get an idea of what its final taste, texture, and consistency will be like. Note that the sum of baker's percentages in any recipe will always be greater than 100%. I will explain shortly. Back to step one. Let's assume that this recipe doesn't have any baker's percentages and you have to figure it out. Here's how to calculate it. Start off by equating the total amount of flours to 100%. In this recipe, there's only bread flour. But if a recipe calls for more than one type of flour, which is common in gluten-free or whole wheat type breads, then break down the 100% accordingly. Once you establish the baker's percentages for all the flours, it's easy to establish the baker's percentages for the non-flour ingredients. You take the weight of the non-flour ingredient, divided by the total weight of flours, times 100. This will give you its baker's percentage. Then round it off to the nearest one decimal point. Earlier, we calculated the percentage for milk powder. So let's calculate the percentage for instant yeast. 3 grams divided by 342 grams times 100 equals to 0.877%. Then round it up to 0.9%. Using the same formula, Proceed to calculate the baker's percentages for the rest of the ingredients. I mentioned previously that the sum of baker's percentages in any recipe will always be greater than 100%. Here's why. These baker's percentages do not refer to the percentage of the total yield. So when salt is expressed as 0.9%, it does not mean that 0.9% of the bread composition is salt. What it means is the amount of salt required is 0.9% the amount of flour used. Therefore, baker's percentage indicate the amount of each ingredient used as a percentage of the total amount of flours. 
This is the reason why the sum of baker's percentages in any recipe will always be greater than 100%. Now that we have calculated a baker's percentages of the recipe, the second step is to calculate the volume of the loaf pan the recipe is intended for. We'll need to know the length, width, height, and type of pan, with lid or no lid. In this example, the recipe is for a Pullman loaf pan, which means there's a lid. To determine the volume of a Pullman loaf pan, it's length times width times height. In this case, equals to 144 inch cube. You can use centimeters if you like, so long as you keep the units consistent throughout. If the recipe is for a lidless loaf pan, you will add one inch to its height to account for the bread rising. If you're using centimeters, extend the height by two and a half centimeters. The formula will then be length times width times its height extended by one inch. Sometimes lidless loaf pans are shaped like a trapezoid where the length and width from the top is slightly wider than the bottom, but that's okay. You can use this formula as the one inch will also cover for any discrepancies. The third step is to calculate the volume of the loaf pan that you want to use. My mini loaf pan is five by two and a quarter inches by two inches high. Since it's a lidless loaf pan, we use the lidless pan formula that I introduced before to calculate its volume. So it's five times two and a quarter times three inches, which equals to 33.75 inch cube. Now that we have the volumes of the recipe's loaf pan and the loaf pan we'll be using, the fourth step is to calculate the new total weight of flours to be used. The formula is the new pan volume divided by the recipe's pan volume times the total weight of flours from the original recipe. In this case, we'll take what we have calculated before, 33.75 inch cube divided by 144 inch cube times 342 grams, which equals to 80.1 grams, and we'll round it up to a whole number 81 grams. 81 grams is the new total weight of flours adjusted for this mini loaf pan. Once we have established the new total weight of flours, the final step is to calculate the weight of the other ingredients. Very simple. Take the baker's percentage of each ingredient times the new total weight of flours. For example, the amount of milk powder to be used would be 3% times 81 grams, which equals to 2.43 grams, and we'll round it up to 2.5 grams. Using the same formula, we'll then calculate the new weight for the other ingredients. And there we have it. We have scaled my Japanese milk bread recipe to fit this mini loaf pan, and it's time to bake. Check this out. This mini loaf is more than four times smaller than the original, yet retains the same fluffiness and consistency. To allow you to compare, I've also baked the original size Japanese milk bread at the same time, and it's like honey, I shrunk the bread. This process we went through will work for any size loaf pan you have, whether it be scaling up or scaling down, even if the volume differs by a little, the result is worth the precision. We have arrived at the end of this video. Two things. One, I've addressed some questions such as, what if I'm unable to find out the size of the recipe's loaf pan? You can find the answer on my blog post. The link is in the description box below. Two, freebie time. I mentioned earlier in the video that I've created a free tool for you, and it's a worksheet which you can print and use as a guide when you're scaling a recipe. It outlines the process today in a one pager. The download link is on the same blog post. If you enjoyed this video, consider clicking on the like button and subscribe to be notified on my next video. See you next time.